Hello and welcome to my channel to both new and old subscribers. My name is Lisbeth and I'm an abstract mixed media artist. The idea for this little Constantina book came before I was sorting out my watercolor papers, my scraps and my leftovers. I had a bunch of these long strips here from an earlier project. They are approximately 5.7 centimeters high and 32 centimeters long. So I picked five of those pieces and began folding them into some zigzag strips where each strip had five of these, I can show you, five of these small squares, so they would become squares, so they are five by seven, five by seven on all four sides. And I will show you later uh, how to do that. But um, now I had decided this would be a little Constantina book and I had five strips and five squares by five is 25 pages and there's a backside too set that, that is 50 small pages this book will contain. That was the easiest part. Then I had to decide what on earth to put in this book here with such small piece, um, pages. So I decided since I very much like to play and splash around with watercolors and I'm certainly not an, an abstract watercolor painter or a watercolor painter at all, but I like to play around seeing the paint flow in and out each or to each other and uh, see what it does. Uh, and I like the abstract way it can become, or it can look like when, when it's dry. So before uh, we do the book itself, I will paint three sheets and they are 24 by 32 centimeters. All these measurements I give you doesn't matter, I think, because you can do whatever measurement you like to do. The only thing you have to take care of is that the, if you want something that is a, a square and the square is seven centimeters, you have to have a strip that is seven centimeters. That's the only thing, if you don't want a square, you get, yeah, you could measure what size you want on your little book or your book. So, um, yeah. But uh, that was this watercolor paper here and I will find some paint and be back. I have found these five watercolors here. And I can show you this is uh, this one and this one and this one and that one. I think I can't remember what the last one or perhaps it is these three. It is uh, turquoise and bluish and greenish colors. And before I put any paint on my substrate here or my watercolor paper, I have um, this is a china marker and this one isn't uh, water soluble. So I will uh, make some marks here. I also have a fine liner and I really don't know if that one is water soluble or not, but uh, it is always fun to have different markers at your pieces. Yeah, and the last thing I have is this uh, graphite, lyra graphite. I, this one is water soluble. So I will take a little of that 
and go in some places. This is very black, but when I start to paint, I think it will loosen a little up. So, yeah, that was all for now. Then I will take my, I have, you're going to take a big brush and water down the whole um, piece here, or you can take a spray, fine, fine spray, a mister, and I think I will do that. And you can see the Lyra is already running, but I don't mind. And this is the uh, this one is yeah quite funny it turns blue yeah I haven't seen that coming but um A little all over the place. Oi, this is strong colors. It's done quite on purpose. I use and I chose these colors because they are not my colors. I normally don't work in this area here, but two. Give yourself a little challenge sometimes. It is nice to, to choose some colors you normally don't work with or don't do. But I also know when they dry, they are not so strong. So, let's see here. I have taped the watercolor paper to a substrate and taped it just not to get white borders but to let it sit there so it can dry and hopefully not boggle too much. It is quite wet now, but uh, let's take the last here. See if there's any white spots. Normally I don't mind if there is white spots, but not for this project here. So I think that is quite fine here. When it is that wet, as wet as it is now, you can always turn it a little and see if you can get it to run. If you like that. This is quite wet now, so it would take its time before it's dry, but um, perhaps it won't be until tomorrow it's dry, but uh, I will paint it two others exactly this way and uh, then I will be back and we can make the book while this is drying. This is the last one and it's still quite wet and I thought perhaps it could I could give it a little gold so I have this iridescent bright fine gold and it's the high flow so um, 
I'm, I'm just dripping some splatters out here and see if what happens. And because <laughs> it is so wet, I think it is. Yeah, again, I will let it run a little. And perhaps it is better to. a little uneven I don't know this is an experiment <laughs> so I will let it dry but um, I forgot to mention that uh, this watercolor palette is from Kuechagi and um, the colors I have been using is number 54 55 56 63 and 62 so if anybody wants to know that i would let them dry and we, we can start making the little book so now for the construction uh, there are several ways you can do that it isn't the easiest thing to make five pages it is much easier if you have decided to make four pieces because if you imagine this wasn't here then it is to fold in in half and in half and again in half and then you would have four four pages but since i i need to do five because i want squares from this piece i would have to do it a little other on, a, on another way and one thing you can do is to measure and then you say 5.7 and 5.7 and you do it like this and you can uh, it up like this that is one way of doing it and probably that's the way you would do it first so you can also um, if you have one already line them up you see here there now they are the same here and then you put it up to the crease here and then you can put it up there and then you have the first one it isn't the easiest thing to do but and then you can take your bone folder and then you have the first and you can go the other way and again, put your ruler up to the end here and go up here and so on for the next three small squares. So uh, if it's the first time you make an accordion, I think it would be much easier for you to have a, such a long strip so you have an even number of page, so you will get an even number and not five but uh, now i have five and i have scored all these in advance i have also cut a little of this piece off here because i don't think the the hinge is needs to be so big so that's the way i have just lined it up here and here and i'm certainly not an expert in this and i'm not uh, normally very good at all this measuring measuring but uh, 
I also want a, a neat book, so yeah. So now I have the first this one, and then we can say this is going to be here, and I want my hinge to be. Perhaps on the back side, but that doesn't perhaps it doesn't matter because I will be doing something on both sides. So uh, yeah. But, uh, I will start to put this one on, and I think the easiest way you can use um, PVA glue, but it, it takes a little time to dry. You can also use a glue stick and that will probably not hold for a long time and, uh, and it will split while you're working in it. So I have found out that this double sided tape is, is the easiest way to do it. So I will just cut a piece and then I will stick it down here and then I will cut the all hang out here. Okay, cut the edges clean, <laughs> you can say. So now here. And then I, that is always the trickiest part to get this layer off. Yeah, yeah, I think it's uh, so this was this and uh, And I will put it up to the edge, edge here. Stick it down. Yeah. And here is the next flap. side not glue the double double side sided tape it's quite sticky this tape Sometimes all the glue comes up, and that's not so smart. This is really the tricky part. There was. I can see I'm not being that's yeah so that is the way I will make the rest of the book and be back so here it is all filled down and you can see it is flip flop flip flop And there's the last hinge there. You can always put the hill around. I won't cut this off yet because maybe it needs some kind of closure. It is quite lively. <laughs> it wants to jump out. So perhaps I will um, make a hole and put a ribbon or something in there so I can tie it with that. But I don't know that yet. But um, now it's ready. To put the watercolor papers in 
and, uh, and as you can see, there's a hinge there. But, um, and there. but uh, it will take a little time to, to dry and uh, I will be back. Yeah, the watercolor papers aren't quite dry yet. It will take a little time, more time. But uh, I was thinking, uh, I was thinking about maybe punching a hole there and flap it up and put this kind of elastic band in it. I don't know if they are too thick or if I have some that are thinner than this, but now I will try at least uh, to start to punch a hole for the first. If this doesn't work, I can always cut the flap off. It wasn't quite in the middle, yeah. But, uh, let's see. Let me just put that there. No, I won't be able to do that but I know what I can do just I have this string or so I can think I could put it through and hopefully I won't yeah 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 damage the hole to fiddle a little around <laughs> you can't draw too heavy uh, too much in this because you would damage the hole but uh, let me see here now Perhaps this could go this way and this can go that way. Yeah, that works nice. It's a little strange not sitting there, but uh, that doesn't matter. I think it works. I'm not so satisfied with the hold. Uh, it's not in the middle, but um, yeah, that's that. And now I will wait a little more and be back. I just uh, forgot to say uh, I will put a link below in the description box for the easy way to make a Constantina book where you only have to fold four pieces, or not pieces, but uh, pages at a time and not five like here. So um, yeah, I, I will do that. And um, I think these are so dry so we can use them now. So I will just remove the tape. It is always very satisfying to remove tape from the watercolor paper here. And uh, you can see there isn't much white borders here, and that's on full purpose. So, yeah. And I have just used, I don't know what it's for, it's something I bought in IKEA. And I thought perhaps uh, like a cutting. For the kitchen, yeah, I don't know, but uh, there was three or four in a pack. But they're nice to use as substrate for different things. Yeah, so anybody who knows me knows I like circles. So I have decided to put a little circle in every page in this book. And I hope I have enough papers, but I have painted three. You could, of course, have chosen to not chosen to make other colors on the other papers but I like that's it's the same all away from the book so I think I will just start punching and see what happens yeah 
and I won't look. anywhere now you get these nice circles of course you have to cut this off again and this I would save perhaps they would end up in another project you never know it is quite a uh, hard to push through all this here. Perhaps that can be a oh, yeah. And, yeah. No, that didn't work that one. But um, I hope I have enough. I would punch a lot of them. Uh, but uh, you don't need to see me doing that. So when I have punched all the brown things here, I will open my book. And you see that is dirty fingers because I had watercolor on them. And then I will open the book. And uh, it, yeah, it is really lively. Perhaps I can find a clip to put. Yeah, like this that is easier to work with and then it is just start gluing them down you can of course uh, punch all the holes uh, and then decide what where you want to put them in, but I think it's in this case it is, doesn't matter very much where I put them. So uh, I can take the first one and show you. I will take my glue stick. Yeah. And uh, give it a good amount. Don't be precious about it. You also can uh, could give it a PVA or Mad medium or whatever you like but here in this case I will put it in and then I will just eyeball it perhaps it will come a little closer yeah that is better and then it down let's take the next, next one that there I, I don't think a lot of about how I put them this is up and down and, and anything but yeah I think this looks quite nice and you can open and put the next one in this one that don't But uh, I will punch the rest out of the sheets and uh, give all them into the book and then I will show you the finished book. I think they look quite nice even though they are green and blue. Not my favorite colors but and I, I don't particularly think this sheet looks very nice but when you cut them off like this it, it's then it's good yuppie i'm done here are all my leftovers small circles and a lot of these thing here like this and um, perhaps they will be in another project you never know so um here it is the little book it has become quite thick and uh, I think this closure is is okay, but I will see if I can buy or find a smaller elastic band uh, for this. I think it is a little too heavy, perhaps. But um, I will open the book. Yeah. Perhaps we can get a little closer. Yeah. I will 
dust. And I haven't put them in and it was totally random the way I glued them in the book. But none of them are exactly the same or alike and that is a nice way to get some different looks the way I made the watercolor paper. So I'm quite satisfied and this was the last page here. And then we can fold it up so that I can just turn it the other way. And then it's more here. It was a lot of punching and a lot of gluing, but uh, I think it was worth the effort. So here, and then the last page. So again, I can fold it up here. Yeah. And you can see it is this. I will see if I can I can take some close-ups. I won't don't know if it is possible to get that close with such small things here, but I will try. I hope you have been inspired and this has been helpful. I would be very thankful if you would give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing my little Danish channel. But uh, for now, take care. Stay creative. Until next time. Bye-bye.